Hi, my name is Jeffrey Kent, and I am the fight director for the Oslo Reps production of The Three Musketeers. Today, and for this production, we'll be working with swept hilt rapiers. You can see the sweeps of the bars here. And on occasion, a cup hilt rapier, which looks like so because it has a cup on the end of it. All this stuff is there just to protect your hand when you hold the sword, right? So it's all here so I don't get whacked in the fingers when I'm fighting. The blades for all of our weapons are aluminum which is really helpful for stage play because aluminum is much lighter than steel, but it's also still very strong. The sword play in this production is inspired by Hollywood cinema, or referred to sometimes as swashbuckling. Historically, swashbuckling, a swash means to cut, and a buckler was a shield, so to swashbuckle was to cut to their shield. For our production, swashbuckling more, is more like a tone or a style than it is a history. So historically, I might defend myself like this to protect my arm, but in a swashbuckling epic, I'm gonna do that twice because it looks cool. So a lot of times the techniques we're using on stage are meant to catch the light or create a sound or a stage picture, not necessarily have a martial application to how you would actually hurt or harm anyone. Ultimately, we're trying to create stage fights that are safe to perform, but are flashy and exciting for the audience to watch. What happens most often in sword fights, or at least at the end of them, is usually one character stabs the other character. In the case of the Musketeers, sometimes several Cardinals guards at once. Um, the way we do a stab is a little bit of misdirection, so the audience, what the audience sees is not exactly what they're going to get. So I'm going to ask Mark to assume the don't stab me position. Thank you very much. Um, in real life, I would be pointing the sword at my partner's center and pressing forward and such to penetrate the body. Don't want to do that because we have to do another show tomorrow. So I'm going to displace the sword so that one part of the sword is downstage of his body and one side is upstage. Then as I press the forward sword forward, it makes contact with his body. He creates an isolation. He reaches his arm down and over it. And if he turns towards camera a bit, it looks like that sword's coming right out of his center. When in reality, if he lifts his arm, it's actually underneath his armpit. Turn again. If I were to do that just with the upside and do it on the upstage side so you can see what that looks like from the audience, I cue back for the thrust and bring him in. Ah! Twist. <laughs> and now Mark is dead and I need another fight count. Oh. The Musketeer's expression that we all know and love, um, all for one and one for all, speaks a little to their fighting style as well that you, when you're in a big fight, like that we often have in a show like this, you want to believe the other actor has your back. But also all for one and one for all speaks to what it takes to create a great stage fight, which is the idea that we, even though on this stage there are cardinals, guards, and musketeers, and they're all fighting to defeat, quote, the other person, we're really actually all working together to tell the audience a really great story. So all for one and one for all is a great motto for an entire cast that does musketeers where we're gonna to join together, work together to tell a great and safe story for the actors that is really exciting for the audience.